Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, we'll take one final look in the Raiders' loss to the Chargers, plus what they have or have not done through the first quarter of the 2023 season. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Wednesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, October 4th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. Your win is a Raider. Just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. Of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, thank you. Over 9,000 subscribers on our YouTube page. That's great. We really appreciate you, Raider Nation. Uh, good, bad, or ugly. doesn't matter. There's a lot of comments on there. Some of them aren't good, but that's okay. We appreciate you checking out the show. If it's two minutes, three minutes, 33 minutes, whatever the case may be, we definitely appreciate that. And we appreciate my man, Ari. He does a great job each and every day getting us up on YouTube. You can check him out on Twitter if you want at Ari Produces. You could also hit me up at your boy Q254. And we got the Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707 654 4693. I'll try to get as many calls and texts in in segment number three. I know a lot of people get mad when their, their calls don't get on or their texts don't get on. Uh, the truth of the matter is, some of them are very long. And it's very hard to get a lot of different calls and texts on the longer they are. We've seen some text messages that are super long, and we get some calls that are three minutes plus. And so I try to get as many as possible in, but just warning you off top, the longer they are, the harder it is to get more and more of the calls and texts in. But we'll do as best we can coming up in segment number three. Segment number two, we'll hear from Lincoln Kennedy. He was a guest on my radio show on Tuesday, Raider Nation Radio 920, Unnecessary Roughness. Just got a couple sound bites that I want you to hear from him about the Raiders and what they've been doing so far through the first quarter of the season, right? Just uh, talking about some penalties, that type situation. Also talk about the second and the third quarter, something that we talked about, their lack of scoring. We talked about it on Tuesday's show. That plus a whole lot more comes up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Here in segment number one, I always like to hit you with the news and notes of the day. And before I get to that, I do want to go ahead and get to a text uh, off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. And this actually comes from Scott, to be real, from Santa Clara. And the reason I'm getting this one in right now is because it's a shout out. Uh, he says, hey Q, Scott, to be real, from Santa Clara. First, I'd like to thank you for all that you do for the nation. I've been riding, you, I've been riding with you for a couple of years now, and I'm so happy for all your success. As a diehard fan from the Bay, it's frustrating. It took them moving to Vegas to get the content that we have now, but it's great to have a true voice like yours represented us. I'm reaching out for the first time because I wanted to shout out my son, Ian, on his 13th birthday. We live in the shadows of Levi Stadium, and my boy has to put up with all the obnoxious Niner fans at school each and every week. I've raised him like my dad raised me, to be a Raiders fan no matter what. He hasn't seen much winning, but he still rocks the silver and black through it all. As rough as it's been, I've always looked forward to spending that time together, watching the games, and never taking it for granted. You helped me, and I'm sure countless others appreciate every moment as you have been so open in sharing your story. So yes, I'm frustrated with the play calling, undisciplined penalties, terrible turnover differential, and the regression of the offensive line play. But it's this moment. It's about loving on my family because that's what matters most. Happy birthday to my boy, Ian, and thanks again to our boy, Q. Raiders. That's from Scott to be real from Santa Clara. And off top, man, thanks for supporting the show. Thanks for rocking with me. But more importantly, uh, thanks for sharing the story of you and your son being able to enjoy Raider games, even though the success and the winning's not there. That's what it's all about. Being able to share those moments, having those moments that he'll look back at and be able to share with his family later on. So happy birthday to Ian. Happy 13th. We like to start the show off like that. Now let's go ahead and get into some news and notes of the day. And off top, how about the pro football focus grades, the five highest graded Raiders from Sunday's loss against the Chargers. And you know, pro football focus, I always say it's not the end all be all, but I still like to go ahead and kind of look at them as a reference at times. And so I think it's a great way to put a bow on the Raiders loss to the Chargers by going ahead and giving the five highest grades uh, for the Raiders on Sunday. And as you can imagine, they were all on defense. Uh, edge rusher Max Crosby, he led the, the way with the Raiders. 93.6 grade. He had two sacks. It should have been three, but that David Long uh, penalty took one away. Handful of pressures, eight total tackles. Max Crosby's Max Crosby, right? He has four sacks on the season so far for the Raiders, and he looks like he's putting in uh, a lot of work and putting in a hell of a season like he always does. So no surprise there, Max Crosby led the way. After that, 
How about free safety Trayvon Merrick? 90.6 grading from Pro Football Focus. One interception should have been two, but he does have that cast on the hand. I have to understand that. Uh, it's actually cost him multiple interceptions so far this season, at least two that I've counted, but he's playing a lot better. Check this out. Through four games so far throughout the course of the season, safety Trayvon Merrick has allowed six receptions for 43 yards, two TDs, and an 83.8 QBR off nine targets. But... He posted three pass breakups and an interception. He had a nine run stops, had a rough first two weeks, but Merrick has not allowed a catch in the last two weeks. So he started off rough, but the last couple weeks he's been playing really good. And again, he's playing with a club on his hand. Would love to see him get that club off his hand so he can come up with a couple more plays. He had one interception on Sunday. Definitely should have been two. Uh, rounding out the top five pro football focus graded Raiders on Sunday, middle linebacker Luke Masterson, 90.3 grading, two total tackles on the day. So there you go. Uh, you know, not a whole lot to talk about when it came to Luke Masterson, but the linebacking position has not been the weak link like I thought it was going to be. They've actually been a pleasant surprise. Defensive tackle Bilal Nichols, 82.9, two tackles and a pass defense. And defensive tackle Adam Butler, 80 uh, grade and three tackles and a quarterback hit. So those are the top five right there. Pro football focus graded Raiders on Sunday. Max Crosby, 93.6. Trayvon Merrick, 90.6. Luke Masterson, 90.3. Bilal Nichols, 82.9. Adam Butler with the 80 score from pro football focus. Now, the bad. <laughs> the Raiders struggle as a team, and this is from Josh DeBow from the AP on Twitter, and you know, you know anytime it's a Josh DeBow stat, 99.9% .9 of the time it's not good. He tweeted out on uh, Tuesday, the Raiders are last in the NFL in turnover margin, last in rushing, tied for second worst in points, drive in red zone, third worst in third down conversions, fourth most penalty yards, and sixth worst point differential. Hashtag smarten up. Again, that's Josh DeBow from the AP. That's terrible. I mean, that's just really, that's the way you, you summarize that, right? In one word, like Charles Barkley would say, terrible. I mean, it's just, that is bad. And that goes back to coaching. That goes back to the players not executing. That just goes back to all in all, all bad, right? From the top to the, to the bottom, right? From the, from the coaches to the players. All that is just bad. Again, last in NFL and turnover margin, last in rushing, tied for second worst in points and drive in red zone, third worst in third down conversions, fourth most penalty yards, and sixth worst, worst point differential. It's not going to cut it, man. It's just not going to get it done ever. You know, it, it, it won't work. You're not going to win a lot of games if those are the categories that you're leading in, and you're leading in a bad way. It's just not going to happen. Again, Josh DeBow is never a guy that you want to go to for positive stats. He never really has any for the silver and black, but that's on the Raiders. That ain't got nothing to do with the reporter. That's got to do with the team. That is all bad, and again, it starts with coaching. So uh, somehow, some way, they've got to find a way to clean that up, and their bye week doesn't come for a long time, so they got to figure it out week to week. They obviously have an extra day this week because they don't take on the Packers until Monday, but, man, that if that doesn't get cleaned up, there's not going to be very many happy days and not going to be very many victory Mondays or victory Tuesdays in this, uh, in this sense, uh, you know, with the silver and black if they can't clean that up. Speaking about Monday night football and the Raiders and Packers, uh, it was funny. There's a commercial that's going to air on SportsCenter a little bit later on this week and probably leading into the game on Monday. And it's funny, a guy reached out to me and he said, Q, I want you to voice this. And it's only my voice is only in it for a few seconds. It's actually a TV commercial that's going to air. Uh, my voice is only in it for a few seconds, but I thought it was pretty cool just previewing the Raiders and uh, and the Packers Monday night football game. And it's funny because he reached out to me, even though it's a it has something to do with ESPN. And of course, I work for ESPN. I do my, my nightly show called Game Night, uh, 7 to 10 p.m. Pacific time. He said, hey, Q, I listen to the Lockdown Raiders podcast all the time. And so that's uh, why I want you to voice this uh, this this commercial. So here's the commercial again. It's a it's a TV ad, uh, but here's the the audio from it. So I thought you'd get a good kick out of it. Again, something that you'll see on ESPN Sports Center later on this week. Check it out. The Raiders will always believe in tradition, history, those who came before us. An organization steeped in the past, searching for a return to glory. Silver and black football is king of the hill of the National Football League. In their path, a cornerstone franchise preparing for a full invasion of the Death Star with a young hotshot at the controls. Love throws, right side, touchdown! Green Bay Packers, oh my goodness! Two iconic teams set to battle in the city where only one thing matters. Just win, baby. So there it was. Not a big deal, but I thought it was pretty cool. 
<laughs> right? I mean, for somebody to reach out and be like, hey, man, we want you to voice this. It's going to be on ESPN. It's going to run during Sports Center. It's going to be, you know, an advertisement for the game on Monday. I thought that that was pretty cool, right? So uh, I'm looking forward to kind of looking up. And it happens. It's funny. As long as I've been in radio, I'll drive down the road and I'll listen to the radio and all of a sudden I hear myself on a commercial. That's cool. I've kind of got used to that. But to be watching ESPN, and I watch ESPN all the time, and, and hear that commercial or see that commercial, that's going to be a trip. So it's going to be kind of cool. So uh, if you do happen to check out Sports Center and you see it, uh, yeah, that's me. Right? And so shout out to them for uh, reaching out and asking me to voice that. Uh, again, a little portion of it, but I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, checking out the video, if you're checking out on YouTube, you get to see it as well. The final little nugget I have for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, uh, UNLV, they unveiled the Al Davis team room in celebration of the Raiders' gift to the program on Tuesday. And Mark Davis and Sandra Douglas Morgan were there in attendance at UNLV. They represented the Raiders and they donated $1 million to UNLV. They unveiled the Al Davis team room uh, named at the Fertitta Football Complex. And so I thought that that was really cool. But Mark Davis, he spoke to, you know, media members that were there. He spoke to uh, faculty at UNLV, some students on the football uh, program there. And uh, here's what he had to say about the donation and the Al Davis team room, what he wants it to stand for. Check it out. What I want this to stand for, what I want the people that come into this room, the young men and women that come into this room to understand that well, my father had a lot of slogans, but some of them were pride and poise. And I want the people that come into this room to understand that they take pride in the organization that they represent, and that is UNLV. But also, that's on and off the field. Poise, when things are not going great or whatever, you stick to it and you make it happen. There's other statements that he made. Commitment to excellence. And that commitment to excellence is on and off the field. And I want these young men and women that come through this building to take that motto as well. And then finally, just win. Just win, baby. And that's on and off the field as well. And so I feel uh, very proud to have my father's name up there. And hopefully it'll make a difference in these people's lives. And uh, the last thing he would say is that the greatness of the Raiders is in its future. And today I want to say that the greatness of UNLV is in its future on and off the field. That audio right there was courtesy of Paloma Villacana from Fox 5 Sports. She covers uh, all sports here in Vegas like a glove. She's actually a guest on my radio show each and every Wednesday, so I'll talk to her a little bit later on this afternoon about that generous donation, a million dollars to UNLV. Now they have the Al Davis team room, and I know a lot of Raider fans right now don't want to hear anything about pride and poise and commitment to excellence or just win baby from Mark Davis when the team is struggling like that, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, man, I still think that that is a big deal, that they donated that type of money and are giving back to the community they do it all the time, uh, really helps support the community here in Las Vegas. I do think that's a big deal. Now, they've got to get their stuff together as far as a football team, as far as the Raiders go. I get that. But again, just kind of taking that as a hell of a gesture from the Raiders to UNLV, who obviously they share Allegiant Stadium with uh, on college game day. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, thought that that was kind of a cool gesture and a tip of the cap to the Raiders. Mark Davis, Sandra Douglas Morgan, the president for that million dollar donation to UNLV. Coming up in segment number two, uh, what the Raiders need to do, especially to get that scoring up, right? They're only averaging 15 and a half points a game. Nothing uh, even over 20 points yet so far this season. They haven't even scored 20 points yet this season. We'll talk about that. You'll hear from Lincoln Kennedy. That'll all come up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast right after I tell you about our partners at eBay Motors. The fact that they've teamed up with Locked On Fantasy football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. And it doesn't matter if you're prepping for daily draft or scouting the waiver wire. Every single week, we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So right now, we'll check out who Vinny has picked out for us this week on eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. And he was looking at, let's see, Jets running back Brees Hall, Bengals running back Joe Mixon, and Packers running back Aaron Jones. Why don't we go with Aaron Jones? Right. They're taking on the Raiders on Monday Night Football. Why don't we talk about Aaron Jones? He said Packers running back Aaron Jones didn't fare well with limited work returning from his hamstring injury against the Lions in week four with some time to heal off a mini bye week. Look for Jones to be ready to show his old explosive self as a runner and receiver on Monday night in Las Vegas. He'll feel right at home with plenty of cheeseheads making the trip to the desert against a bad Raiders overall defense. Not too far down the road where Jones star was born in his hometown of El Paso. Texas. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. eBay Motors knows the championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride or die stays running smooth. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack, bumpers, whatever your car needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride first or right the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at those prices, you're going to burn rubber 
not cash. So there you go. Check them out. eBay guaranteed fit. And I'm interested to see what that Raiders defense looks like against Aaron Jones. Vinny Iyer is talking big about Aaron Jones and going up against that, uh, that poor, that bad Raiders defense that played pretty stinking well in the second half of that Chargers game. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get into the conversation I had on my radio show on Tuesday about if the Raiders are going to get this thing turned around because there's still 13 games guaranteed. If they're going to get this thing turned around, what is it going to take? And it was funny because when I was talking about it on my radio show, I continued to say, and I wanted to make sure I said it slow so everyone heard me, I'm not saying they're going to get this thing turned around, but if they're going to get it turned around, what has to happen? And for me, it starts up front. The offensive line has got to be a whole hell of a lot better than what it has been. Josh Jacobs, I feel like, is really starting to round into form, so he's got to be a big, heavy factor in the run game and the passing game, just like what you saw from him on Sunday against the Chargers. Those are two elements that have to happen for the Raiders to get this thing turned around, and that defense has to build off what they did in the second half against the Chargers if they're going to have a chance. Now, that has nothing to do with the coaching. That has nothing to do with you know the players and, and, and shooting themselves in the foot with stupid penalties. That has nothing to do with that, but just a couple elements and a couple areas that I'm looking at if, not that they're going to, if, big capital I-F, I want to make sure everyone hears me correctly, not that I'm saying they're going to turn around things because, you know, everyone thinks that, oh, you know, Q's trying to pump sunshine. No, look, they have to prove that they can turn this thing around. So, again, I want to emphasize the word if they're going to turn it around. Those are two areas, three areas, actually, that they've got to really focus in on. So I had Lincoln Kennedy on my radio show like I do each and every Tuesday and Thursday, normally around 3.30 Pacific time. Uh, on Tuesdays, we review the previous game, and on Thursdays, we preview the upcoming game. And, of course, the upcoming game is the Green Bay Packers. So on Tuesday, I asked Lincoln that exact question about getting things turned around, what has to happen. You'll hear my question. You'll also hear Lincoln's answer and then a follow-up about penalties and self-inflicted wounds. Here's Lincoln Kennedy and my question about if – the Raiders are going to get things turned around. What has to happen? The question I threw out there to Raider Nation today was, if the Raiders are going to get this thing turned around, and that's a big if, if they're going to get it turned around, what has to happen? So from your point of view, what has to happen with this team to, to be able to turn things around? Offensive line has got to start blocking run and pass better. Defense has got to get turnovers short in the field for the offense. Uh, whether it's defense in conjunction with special teams or what have you, they've got to give the shorter field to the offense to make it easier for the offense to score and not be so, you know, time-consuming, if that makes sense. But offensive line's got to play better. Defense has got to get turnovers and, and continue to get sacks. And just got to, you know, there's other people who've got to stand up and be counted and, and, and be recognized. And I just don't see that unanimously out of this team yet. I see, you know, sparks in the individuals here and there, but unanimously, I don't see it. There's been too many times where they shoot themselves in the foot. My perfect example of that yep. was David Long Jr. just walking right past the line of scrimmage, and then Max Crosby gets a sack, but it's eliminated because of that penalty. Those kind of penalties, yeah. Lincoln, those can't happen. They just can't. Well, I mean, that's, that's the thing that has plagued the Raiders for some time now. It's, just, it's not just this year. Right. It's plagued the Raiders. I mean, you had bonehead penalties. How many times last year or the last couple of years did we see you know guys jumping off sides or false start at home in a legion? Yeah. Are you kidding me? You know, it's not it's not the most deafening place, even though you do have a lot of visiting fans there and they might be making noise. There is really no reason that you can't hear. You can't hear the quarterback call out the cadence when I can hear him and I'm up, up in the press booth. So there you go. There's Lincoln Kennedy talking about what has to happen for the Raiders to get things turned around. And, you know, I think that he's spot on. I think that he's spot on. And, and look, I'm not going to question what Lincoln says. Lincoln's a guy that's been there, done that in the locker room. That's why I always love picking his brain, and I get a chance to do it multiple times a week. But what he had to say about what they've got to do and the way that he shot it out so quickly, it was like boom, boom, right? It's, it's just that simple, but they've got to go out there and do it. And, of course, that has to do with the coaching as well. The coaching has to make sure that they go out there and do what they got to do, and the self-inflicted wounds are just – just too much. And I keep emphasizing that David Long penalty because that's just that's that's just unacceptable. Right. I mean, it's just no excuse for that penalty that he had when he just walked clearly past the, the line of scrimmage like it was nothing like there was no line of scrimmage. Like he was free to roam anywhere. Right. It just made no sense whatsoever. And it was it's just like, what were you thinking? Right. And you can hear the frustration in Lincoln's voice when he's talking about that. And again, I, I mentioned it. That's not a Josh McDaniels exclusive thing. That's been a Raiders problem for a very long time. It didn't matter who the coach was, if that was McDaniels, if it was Bisaccia, if it was uh, Del Gruden, if it was Del Rio, if it was, you know, any, any of those coaches. It just didn't matter, 
right? Every single coach has had the same problem. Penalties, self-inflicted wounds. The Raiders continue to do it to themselves. And we talked quite a bit on Tuesday here on the podcast about the Raiders and their struggle scoring, especially in the second and third quarters, where they've only scored a total of nine points in eight quarters. No touchdowns, all field goals. And, uh, you know, in, in week three, no points in the second or third. Right. Week one, they had three points in the second quarter, no points in the third quarter. Week two, three points in the second quarter, no points in the third quarter. Week three, no points in either quarter. And then on Sunday, no points in the third and only three points in the fourth quarter. That just can't happen. Or in the third quarter, sorry. So no points in the second quarter and none and three in the third quarter uh, for week four. So 17 points, 10 points, 18 points and 17 points. You're not going to win a bunch of games. So I asked Lincoln Kennedy about the struggles of the second and third quarter. Here's what Lincoln had to say. Final thing for you, Lincoln. It's the second and third quarter. They have not scored a touchdown yet in four games. I mean, what is it going to take to get something going in the middle of the game as opposed to the, the first quarter and the last quarter? Creativity and execution. That's what it comes down to. Look, coaches coach, but players play. Mm-hmm. And if a coach did, did his wherewithal, did his true study, and to say, you know what, this play should work, whether you have to put it in the quarterback's ear, hey, Jimmy, look for Hunter over the, over, uh, look for Hunter over the deep dig route. He'll come open over between the safety and the linebacker. Look for that. If you have to put it in words like that, then so be it. But you've got to get everyone involved in this offense. You have far too many playmakers that have been relatively unheard of this season that you have got to get involved because teams are going to start taking away number 17. Teams are going to start trying to take away number 16. Teams are, have already started taking away number 8. You've got to find a way to get the ball to the other playmakers to keep the keep it creative and keep the ball moving down the field. So there you go. I, I love Another answer that I love from Lincoln Kennedy about the struggles in the second and third quarter and somehow – Right. I mean, we're talking about what is it going to take to get this team turned around? They've got to have some success in the second and third quarter. You can't sleepwalk through those. You, you, you know, you, you, it's good to get off to a good start. It's good to go down the field on the opening drive and get in the end zone. That's fantastic. It's great to, you know, have the firepower to get back in in the fourth quarter. But what about the second and third quarter? You've got to be able to do something. So Coach McDaniels has got to press the right buttons. He's got to dial up the, the, the right calls. Right. The players got to go out there and execute. Right. I mean, it all goes hand in hand. Nothing is exclusive to one area of the team. It's not just a player's thing and it's not just a coach's thing. It's a collective. Right. Something that Max Crosby said following the game on Sunday. We have to play better as a unit. And he emphasized the word unit. That's the whole team. That's not just defense. That's not just offense. That's the whole team, including the coaching staff. They all have got to perform better at a higher level. So that's what I got for you in segment number two. I thought that was some really good feedback from the great Lincoln Kennedy, who again joins me each and every Tuesday and Thursday at 3.30 Pacific time on Radio Nation Radio 920, Unnecessary Roughness, my radio show. What's on your mind? Calls and texts are coming up next, 707-654-4693. Before we get to any of that, though, I do want to tell you that today's show, the Lockdown Raiders podcast, is brought to you by Better Help. And If you've ever had struggles in life, if you've ever gone through a time period where you just didn't know what to do, and it doesn't have to be like a tragedy, it could be just a a tough decision. You know, should I take a job? Should I not take a job? Right? Should I move? Should I not move? Should I break up with this person? Should I not? You know what I mean? Like, it could be something that's not life or death, but still something that bothers you. And I don't know if, if you are like me, where a lot of times my mind stays up all night long. Like, I could be laying in bed, but my mind's still thinking about something. And, you know, sometimes you need to talk to somebody. Sometimes you need to be able to, you know, have a friend that's not going to judge you, but just listen to you and help you kind of work out your situation, you know, through open word. Well, that's how better help can really help you. It's it's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to the best version of yourself. It just it isn't just for those who experience major trauma, right? I mean, BetterHelp can do a whole lot of things. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, so you can do it from your home, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge if things don't seem to work out for you, right? That's okay. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Go to BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Again, BetterHelp dot com slash locked on. I also want to tell you about FanDuel. And right now, snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel. 
It's America's number one sports book. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better place and better, no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and a whole lot more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season the right way. One quarter of the way through the season. Got plenty of time still. Get to FanDuel. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your time to shine. Your calls and texts. Draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a text today from Desert Raider in Arizona. It's a pretty lengthy text. He says, hey, Q. Desert Raider from Arizona, longtime listener, first-time contributor. I'm responding because of my concern for the seemingly complete lack of discipline at time for the Raiders. It's not all on the coaches, although I think some of their decisions in clock management, especially the last 115 of the second quarter versus the Chargers, are very, very questionable. But we need discipline, work ethic, and self-motivation on the field. We named nine team captains this year. Where the hell are these guys? They need to be seen, coaching, correcting issues of their peers on the field and the sidelines. They're leading edge to the culture change. Accountability to your team and team captains should be first in everyone's mind. Just my opinion and my two cents. Also, you are right. The Raider fans base in rich history, not recent history, deserve a better product. We need captains to be captains. Not giving up on our Raiders, though. Not now, not ever. Keep up the great work, Q. Love your show, and you are always the first listener of the day. Much love. Peace out. Raiders. That's from Desert Raider in Arizona. And, you know, that's a good point that hasn't been brought up. The Raiders named a lot of captains. A lot of them, like you mentioned, nine. Most teams have three, right? They have nine. Where are all these nine, these nine leaders and nine captains when you need them the most? I know Devontae. I know Josh. I know Max, right? I know what they're bringing to the table, but I haven't heard, you know, A.J. Cole say anything. I haven't heard of Daniel Carlson, and I'm not even sure which ones are the, the, the captains. I forget after uh, the three that I mentioned. Uh, I think Colton Miller is a captain as well. Um, you know, there's a lot. With Jimmy G is a captain. There's, there's a ton of captains, right? Nine is a lot. I mean, saying that you only put 11 on one side of the field at one time, right? I mean, you only got 11 guys on the field at one time. You got nine captains. And I know that they're not all uh, on offense or all on defense, but, man, that's a lot of captains. Where are they at? I think that you bring up a great point. They need to stand up and be heard, right? And not necessarily by me, but by those guys in the locker room. Like, it doesn't matter me, about me. Don't do anything for me, and they don't. They don't care what I say, right? But they've got to be heard by those cats in the locker room, and they've got to be able to, you know, uh, uh, hear what they have to say and go out there and execute and play at the level that the captains expect them to play, right? Those are their peers. They should do exactly that. You bring up a great point. Thanks so much for that text. Fantastic stuff. And appreciate you being a first time texter. Feel free to text in any time. Uh, up next is a call from Peter JJ in Tacoma, Washington. He's calling to talk about Jimmy G or a O'Connell, who he thinks should be starting this upcoming week versus green Bay. Here he is. Peter JJ in Tacoma, Washington. Hey Q, this is Peter JJ. Up in Tacoma, Washington, just got done listening to uh, today's podcast and um, on the the debate you want to throw out there, Aiden McConnell or Jimmy G. Um, I gotta say, man, I have a, I completely disagree with your take. Um, I've been a lifelong Raider fan since 1976, which has no meaning in this this discussion, but. Isn't our motto just win, baby? And then you even just said on the podcast today, Jimmy G gives us the best spot to win, the best chance to win. Well, that's what we're playing for, to win games. And you then, on top of that, you even said the season's still young, not to give up on it. So why in the hell will we bowl Aiden O'Connell out on Monday Night Football when we're trying to save the season and you just said Jimmy G gives us the best chance to win, which I do agree with that. So there'll be time for Aiden O'Connell, but this is not the time. I hope we take care of business. I'm flying down to Vegas for the Monday night game with, with my lady and a couple of the homies and their ladies, and we're going to root this team on. But I sure as hell hope I see Jimmy G under center and not the rook who has a long way to go. I'm not going to judge one game. But I am not in favor as a Raider fan to keep rolling this guy out. When the season's young, we're trying to save the season and get to the playoffs. That's what it's all about. That's what our model's about as Raiders. And Al Davis put that stamp on it. Just win, baby. If you want to just win, baby, you roll out the veteran, Jimmy G. And as you said, he gives us the best chance to win. Let's freaking go. Thank you so much for the call, Peter. And, and that was my point exactly, right? I said that last week. I'd like to see Aiden O'Connell get multiple games in a row of playing. 
That's why I didn't want him to play last week. That was my exact reasoning that I said a thousand times last week. And most people didn't understand it. Most people thought I was hating on Aiden O'Connell, and I wasn't. I just wanted to see him have a chance to go out there and compete in multiple games in a row because you're not going to know anything from a young guy based off one game, right? You saw how he got better through one game. So, okay, it'd be great to see what he could do against a different defense and then a different defense and then a different defense and a different defense. Yes, Jimmy G gives the team the best chance to win. Brian Hoyer would have been, like I said, if it was going to be a one-week thing, I would have been okay with Brian Hoyer, even though I know that's nothing sexy and we all know who Brian Hoyer is. I think for a one-game play, he'd be okay. That's all, that was my whole point. So you're not wrong at all, and I actually agree with you. I know you sound a little salty, but, I mean, I'm not being, again, I'm not being a hater to Aiden O'Connell, not trying to tank the season. That was actually my exact point that I was trying to say last week that a lot of people didn't want to hear. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't really know what you – you know, what else you want me to say, but you're you're right. So there you go. We'll see. I asked Coach McDaniels on Monday, does Jimmy have a chance to play? Is he playing this week if he's healthy, or is it, you know, the Aiden O'Connell show? It's a Jimmy G show of healthy. Okay, so be it. So there it is. Again, I just give my opinion because that's my opinion. And you give your opinion, and I respect that. So thanks for the call. I definitely appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Phil from the JSRBC out of Jersey. He says, hey, Q. It's Phil from the JSRBC out of Jersey. Been listening for years now, but I'm a new booty on calls and texts. Just want to say I don't understand how Raider Nation doesn't get why starting Brian Hoyer against the Chargers would have made sense for one game. It would have been different if Jimmy G was out for the stretch, but it's a decision I feel like could make or break Josh McDaniels moving forward. Although I do think most of the nation would have came for his head regardless of the decision that was made. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. Anyway, Aiden O'Connell looked okay, but it was clear it was way too soon. I'm not exactly sure what the answer is anymore, Q, but I'm 100% positive that I'm sick of losing, bro. Big ups to you and your family. First listen every day. Stay safe out there. That's Phil from the JSRBC out of Jersey. And again, going back to even the call before that, I agree 100%. That's, that, that was exactly the point. I thought Brian Hoyer would be fine for one game. And no, Rare Nation wouldn't have been happy. No, Rare Nation is not going to be happy at all outside of winning. And even then, there, it's, it's a little questionable. Right, there's still times when Raider Nation's upset, and I get it, right? There has not been enough consistent winning at all. The fans have been loyal. I say it all the time. The fans have been loyal, even though there's a lot of infighting now, but the the fans have been loyal to the team, and they all want the same common thing, winning. Wins, 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 right? They all want to be like that DJ Khaled. All I do was win, 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 no matter what. And unfortunately for the silver and black, that's not happening. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, it looks like it's going to go back to Jimmy G as long as he's healthy. But, you know, the thing is, we haven't heard him cleared yet. So that's interesting. It's intriguing to see what's going to happen. Uh, there's no media today. Uh, there'll be media tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday since the game is not till Monday. So, really, we won't get our first injury report till Thursday. Should be interesting to see how that shakes out. So, Phil, thanks so much for that text. I do appreciate you. Uh, up next, got a call from California Raider. He's calling to talk about where, where the Raiders go from here. And they're 1-3 and three, and have the Packers coming up on Monday night, plus a few winnable games after that. Here he is, California Raider. My boy Q, what up? What a California Raider want to comment on where do we go from here? We got some games coming up that we should be able to win. But I hate to admit it. The lack of leadership scares me. McDaniels is supposed to be a genius offensive coordinator. I haven't seen that yet. He's not a real leader of men, and that's showing all as, as well. So where do we go from here? We we let Aiden O'Connell play, and uh, it was a rough start. We tried to put it together, but we weren't able to. How about the situation? I would like to see Josh Jacobs get a couple of touches. You're in a fourth down situation anyway. So why not let him run a couple of times, get a little closer? But again, where do we go from here? You know, is it too early to throw in the towel with McDaniels? Possibly. If they did, I'd like to see Rob Ryan take over. I think he's got leadership skills that McDaniels does not have. Keep the coordinators that you can and try to make this work. And then McDaniels go about his business. And I hate to say it, let the kid learn by fire. Um, this team is not what it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be an offensive juggernaut. It is not. The defense has improved a little bit. Here and there we see spurts. But I'm asking you, Q, where do we go from here? 
You're my boy Q. I appreciate everything you do. Lonely California Raider, out. Thanks so much for the call. And I don't think McDaniels is getting fired anytime soon. I really don't. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I just don't see it. Right? I feel like Mark Davis understands what Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels behind closed doors, not to us, but behind closed doors, has shared with him as far as the plan. And I think that, and this is just me scatter shooting, this is just my gut feeling. I think that they have a three year window, right? Where they're gonna they're gonna give them the three years to get this thing turned around. Not that Raider Nation is gonna be happy with that. I get it. Uh, I'm not happy with losing. I don't like losing either. I'd love to see them win, 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 but they're not doing that right now. But I do think unless this just season goes off the rails and it just looks awful and there's really Mark Davis has no I, no, no choice, I don't think that, that he's going anywhere anytime soon. I, I really don't. We'll see. Um, you know, as far as the, the team playing better, it's only four games in the season, so I'm not ready to sit there and throw the season away and say that it's over. Right. They still have time to get things turned around, but that's up to the players and the coaches. Right. Like Lincoln Kennedy always says, coaches, coach, players play. They've got to figure that out. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing more Aiden O'Connell now that he's played, but I understand that it's early in the season. So, again, that's why I was cool with him waiting and playing a little bit later on. If things were, you know, not going where they're supposed to go and you looked up and said, "Okay, there's nothing left in the season, but there's about five games left. Let's go ahead and let the rookie go out there and ball out, see what he looks like against five different defenses. That would have been cool with me. But again, that's just me. Uh, what do I know? Right. <laughs> so that's obviously not the d- direction that they went. And, and that's OK. Right. That's the coaching staff. That's uh, that's not me. And, and they've got to go out there and do the best thing that they do for the team. And all I could do is talk about it, share my thoughts on it and keep it pushing. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, up next, got a text from Fibs in the 702. Hey, Q, it's Fibs from the 702. I know our Raiders have been off to a rocky start. I hope that our offense can get it together soon, especially our offensive line to allow our formations not to, con- not to constantly be in a form of max protection. But looking at our defense in a positive light, I think they are close. Stupid penalties have cost us turnovers and field position, and offensive turnovers keep them tired. Yet, I think they're improving with their pass rush and have been in position to make plays all year round. You have to capitalize and finish those plays. Here's the hoping for a better rest of the year that's fibs in the 702 and yeah i mean i'm I'm hoping like i said in segment number two if the raiders are going to get things turned around this season and they have plenty of time the defense building off what they did in the second half of that chargers game is going to be a major major factor for just that uh we got time for one more call uh raider rich in the 831 he's calling to talk about the video floating around of md at the game on sunday at sofi he's yelling back at a fan to be smarter after the fan was yelling and cursing at him uh here he is raider rich in the 831 thank you Greater Rich Man 831. So, um, I've seen that video um, kind of floating around about uh, Mark Davis yelling at fans to smarten up after being told, um, after they were, you know, obviously chanting for Josh McDaniels to, to be fired. Um, he was adamant, pointing at his head multiple times, saying, hey, smarten up. Um, and I know you said it before multiple times that um, the only thing that's, uh, that's a consistent is, um, is the Raider Nation. Um, this is unfortunate, man. Um, you would hope an owner would kind of want to hear what his fans think, because uh, obviously we're its consumer, if that makes sense. It's sports entertainment, but we're the consumer. Um, so it's important to hear what we think at times. I'm not saying to make a decision based on what we think, uh, but it's okay to listen to us and hear us. Um, just unfortunate, man, because 15.5 points a game as an average isn't cutting it. Uh, I don't know what it's going to take to, to change. Uh, he's got his guys now, Josh McDaniels. Um, but uh, something's got to change. Um, I, I think I've seen enough of Josh McDaniels. I know there's people that don't want to hit the reset. I've seen enough of them. I've seen him in Denver, and I've seen him now. I, I don't see a, a, a big change, man. Um, it just, just isn't working. I'm not saying, like, um, you know, today he's gone, but there's got to be some thought within the organization. Like, hey, maybe this isn't the guy. Uh, we need the guy. This ain't the guy. Um, 15.5 points a game, man, um, for someone that's supposed to be an offensive genius. Um, I looked up the Arizona Cardinals. They're averaging 20.5 points a game with a arguably a tougher schedule, a first-year play caller, and a no-name quarterback. Uh, who's been around the league for, I, I just read, seven years, and yet he's doing better. Uh, I, it, I don't know what to think, man. Um, I'm at a frustration point. Got my son. You know, he's 13. You know, cry and say, man, I've, I've been cheering for, for a, a loser all these years, Dad. Why can't we win? 
and I, I don't have an answer for him. You know, is it Mark Davis? I don't know. You tell me. I, I, I'm, I'm just not a point where I'm frustrated. I mean, I want to see it turned around, like now. You know, the, no more playing games, man. We need to start winning games. Um, you can talk about turnovers. You can talk about everything else. Um, but ultimately, like, just win, baby. That's all you got to do. Just win. Um, and it ain't happening. So um, there needs to be some change. Just not sure where to begin. Hopefully you can uh, chime in on that. Thank you for the call, my man. And I talked about this situation on my radio show on Tuesday, and I'll talk about it one time here on the podcast. I saw the original video of the guy yelling and screaming towards MD and MD really ex- kind of ignoring him. You know, they were in an open end part of the stadium. So it's not like he was in a suite ex- excluded from the fans. He was outside sitting in a, you know, sweet area. It was really nice. And the fans yelling and screaming at him, flipping him off, you know, telling him to fire coach McDaniels. And I get the frustrations, but I'm just not built like that. Uh, and maybe that's on me, but I, I, I couldn't see myself ever yelling and cussing and, and screaming at the owner of, of, of any team like that. I, I really couldn't see myself yelling and cussing and screaming at someone at some kind of event like that in, in, anyway. Right. Period. And believe me, there's times where I'd love to yell and cuss and scream at people. Believe me, a lot of times, even on the radio, there's times where I'm like, you know what? I'd love to just rip that dude, but I'm not going to do it. Right. I'm just it's just not in me to do it like that. Uh, I didn't like the way that the fan approached MD. Didn't like the fact that MD, you know, talk, decided that he had to talk back and tell him to be smarter. Because, again, now all the headlines are Mark Davis yells at fans. And so that's not a good look for him. Uh, I know he loves Raider Nation more than anything. I know that he wants his team to be great and get back to winning. Um, and, and he's trusting that the hire that he made is going to make that happen. And, unfortunately, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know what that results in. I don't know if that means that he pulls the plug. I said earlier I don't think he does this year. I think he gives them next year. Uh, but it's an unfortunate situation. So when someone tagged me on Twitter and said, what do you think about this? I said, I hate it. I hate it for the fans. Uh, treating MD like that, and I hate for MD yelling back at the fans like that. I, I just I don't think it was a good look all around. Again, I'm just not built like that. I'm 46 years old. I'll be 47 in, in November. I would never find myself cussing at somebody the way uh, that this, this guy was cussing at MD and flipping them off and telling them this, that, and the other. I just I couldn't do it. That's just not in me. I'm, I'm not that guy. Um, you know, I, I like to treat people with respect. Uh, I know that that's not a, a, a thing anymore. I get that, but that's that's a, that's a thing for me. And I would think that some of these fans would have better home training than that. You're out in an event. You, you know, you, you act, you act, you act better than you do at your own house, right? When you go to someone else's house, you act better, right? That's what I was always told. Mom always told me, you go to someone else's house, be on your best behavior. Well, out in the stadium is, is, is someone else's house. And I know there's fights all the time. There's all kind of ugliness going on at games and it sucks, especially when there's kids around, but it happens. I just think the fans need to be better. And, you know, I wish that MD had had a chance to not respond it. And, and again, because it just makes the headline look bad for him. But Raider Rich, thanks for that call. I do appreciate you. And uh, a lot of people talking about that video or videos floating around right now on the internet. So that's all I got time for. Went a little bit longer in the show. Coming up tomorrow, we'll be talking with Peter Bukowski. As we'll turn the page, we'll have the crossover edition. We'll talk all things Packers, all things Raiders. Week five matchup. I actually have someone hit me up on Twitter. and It's like, Q, you should just cancel all the crossovers the rest of the, the season and just do like a whole segment just on calls uh, because the season's over. And I'm like, look, man, <laughs> You know, I'm here to talk about the team, good, bad, ugly, whatever the case may be. I get it. Some people aren't interested in the upcoming game because they think the season's over, but uh, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm going to do uh, everything that I'm supposed to do, bring you everything. If you choose to listen or, or, or watch it, that's on you, right? But I'm going to go ahead and continue to bring you the best quality product that I can each and every day. That's my commitment to the show. That's my commitment to you, and that's just what I'm going to do. So I would never, ever cancel the crossover edition. I know some fans, that's their favorite show, but I've actually had some people tell me that, well, the rest of the season doesn't matter. I'm not ready to do that. It's week five. <laughs> it's it's barely October. I'm not ready to do that at all. So appreciate all the support, Raider Nation. Appreciate all the feedback. I understand the frustration. Uh, hopefully the Raiders find a way this uh, upcoming Monday to get things turned around. But, of course, we'll be back with the crossover edition tomorrow. Peter Bukowski, great dude, good fun friend of mine. We'll be talking all things Packers and Raiders here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby. And happy birthday, Ian, 13th birthday. Happy birthday to you.